Are you ready to go around the world? Sit back, relax, and buckle your seatbelt as we take off for an adventure. It's jet lagged free, but filled full of fun and travel insights. The only thing you'll need to pack is a sense of humor. <laughs> Time for the award winning travel show Around the World. And welcome, to Globe Trotters and Armchair Travelers, to another edition of Around the World. I'm Arthur von Wiesenberger, surrounded by beauty. Martha Bull and Rebecca beast. Brand. And the Beast. And the Beast. And the world. We have got a great show for you today. We're going to go all over the globe to some places that are so off the beaten track. It's really going to be exciting. Yeah. Uh, coming up, we're going to have uh, one of the places on our list is Ethiopia. Yeah. That's so exotic. Isn't that something? Yeah. Uh, Ali Alstrand just got back. I mean, just got back this week, and they just elected a new prime minister. He's going to tell us all about how things are there because uh, it may be a place to go. I think tourists are discovering that Ethiopia's got a lot to share. Yeah. Uh, also, we're going to be going to Colorado. Uh, Gaylene Orr is going to tell us all about the Grand Junction area in mm -hmm. Grand County. And it's going to be a grand old time. <laughs> <laughs> and then David Gordon is going to come in from Ireland live with the top of the morning or top of the evening. He's um, with the probably, luck of the Irish and, and, a, and a probably a glass or two of Guinness. I know, I know, uh, David. Yeah. And uh, he's going to take us to Bratislava, which I've never been to, no. never even heard about. It sounds I would like a sausage. Yeah, it does. I'll have a Bratislava <laughs> with mustard. And then we're going to go uh, with him over to Hungary, because when you eat Bratislava, brat, you brat get hungry. Was, you get hungry. <laughs> Speaking of hunger, we're then going to take you to Zurich, Switzerland, where I was just uh, a couple weeks ago. And, uh, and you're back. Yes. And we're going to eat our way around Zurich a little bit. Okay. And stay in a great hotel, the Bar Line. So we've got that and much, much more in this edition of Around the World. By the way, this edition of the Around the World is directed by Michael Nicholson, a fabulous director at SBTV. And of course, we've got to say hello to Elliot Jacobson, who is our engineer and a floor producer and a wonderful guy. And uh, we're lucky to have all this great talent right here at the station. So uh, I think now it's time for Travel News. Travel News is brought to you by an internet website, www.atw.tv, the first place you go to visit anywhere in the world. The last place on earth. Oh, that too. There you go. Speaking of the best places to go in the world, you yeah. have a little list of some things. I do. Oh, Martha Bull. Tell us what's going okay. on. Okay, I will tell you the world's best airport according to Skytrax World Airport Awards, but I'm gonna tell you first that Zurich is number six worldwide. I'd give it a very high ranking in my book. Yep, but um, what's, what I find interesting is no U.S. airports. Well, that doesn't surprise really? me. Do you know what? I was thinking about that. Any thinking, airports and, you think are And you know what? Merit? I think Phoenix is a nice airport. And I think yeah. with what they've done, they've added a lot of really nice restaurants from um, restaurants around the Phoenix and Scottsdale area. Mm -hmm. So they, it, I mean, it makes so it's it... more localized. Yeah, it's, it makes it more fun to, you know, so you get a, a taste. Of, uh, so it's, it's, a southwest uh, it's clean taste, and, yeah. it, and it, it seems as though... Things run smoothly. Hmm. Um, the only bummer is if you land and you have to catch a flight at the other end. You know, and it I, is I have done away. the OJ yeah. Simpson yeah. run. Yeah. Yeah. yeah, yeah. So it's a big, it's a big airport. Anyway, so it's interesting. For the third year in a row, the Singapore airport is number one. Munich is number three. Hong Kong, Tokyo International is five. Central Japan International Airport, so they've got two. Mm -hmm. And then they have London Heathrow Airport. I'm I can't believe I, that. I know. That's I couldn't strange. think that would I was avoid Heathrow. Yeah. Mm -hmm. and, and, yeah, matter of fact, what we're flying into on, Gatwick. Martha? What do they rank them on? Why it's it's a survey of, of tons of different um, people from around the world, lots of travelers, and this is how the, what they came out with. Hmm. I, I don't know. Amsterdam and then Beijing Capital International Airport. So there you go. Oh, and I just wanted to say one thing. I have been traveling an awful lot lately, not by not willingly, but because we've been evacuated. Well, some not willingly. willingly. <laughs> She's been handcuffed and taken away. <laughs> I mean, it wasn't planned. I, yes, I went. I went to Hawaii. That was willing. But there were there have been a number of times, five to be exact, recently that we've had to evacuate, and I have been all over the map. And finally, my my suitcase just <laughs> ripped open from just overuse. And it's a Briggs and Riley. And it turns oh. out I remembered that it's got you know lifetime guarantee. I took it back to the luggage shop. They will repair it. It'll be done within a week. And they then they told me, and this is very important. You can bring any of your Briggs and Riley in once a year, and they will completely really? refurbish it. I just have this so really high end little tote that I take onto the plane, and it runs with me like a little rover. You know, pulls. Yeah. And the zipper, all of a sudden, the zippers just broke, and I had to leave it in Aspen, Colorado, in the room. And it's like, I, yeah. and I had to like cut it open to get my stuff out. It got mm. all. 
so, so, so this is my recommendation, good. Briggs and Riley. It's worth this, the oh. amount. And once a year, you take it in, and they'll completely, you yeah. know, make sure everything's oiled and greased and cleaned up and everything. So, so it's a great. I, I like that. I it's travel it. with Briggs and, and Riley too. Yeah, really. We should have Briggs and Riley as an advertiser. Yeah. There you go. yeah. <laughs> so, what's cooking okay. in the world of art? Okay, okay, okay. I'm so excited. So, everybody knows I'm kind of into this art thing. Um, so, it's my um, I was at a place with Martha, and we just went to a beautiful wine tasting with a vintner in town that is creating a museum to be named later. It's a surprise. It was a sneak a peek um, at a beautiful uh, collection, and it made me think of wanting to travel for art. So, then I started researching this. And traveling for art is such a big deal. There's a million websites where you can go and say, uh, we're traveling for art. And there's all these things that pop up. So you can decide what type of art you like. And there's tours put together. And, you know, we think of Javine and you know, Monet. And we take a Fran a France and Paris and Louvre. And so here's what he collects. These are cows and figurines sitting around a poker table. And they're about the size of five inches tall. And they're playing poker. Oh, and there's the Spanish bull ring. Now, he goes down all over. Mexico and goes to all the different cities and picks his art up and he crates it back in, in ice coolers. Wow. And then, okay, a fruteria, now, isn't that the cutest little thing? That's such a scene in Mexico. And those little pineapples, they're like half an inch tall and the detail so on them, it's crazy how detailed this stuff is. And then these guys are like five inches tall and they're all painting. And there's two perspectives of these these uh, they're on um, the day of the dead they're skeletons dressed up and they're painting and some of the paintings in there that you would see would be like a famous um, Van Gogh painting and then there's this guy on the left he's painting that statue of the woman right there and he's doing it right there I mean what minds of these artists and apparently this is a type of art that's very popular in Mexico and I'm gonna find out more about it and tell you guys more about it because I just think it's fascinating it was, it was, that there's this whole art culture so you could go all around the world and look at the different art cultures and there's something there so hmm. for an art appreciator you pick your favorite and go see it so I'm it's exciting pretty exciting well you know what's not exciting is if you wanted to stay at the Four Seasons Hotel in Beverly Hills today you well, can't what happened you can't stay at the Four Seasons not because we just had an earthquake you can't stay at the Four Seasons Beverly Hills because it's fully sold out to one person guess who Oprah <laughs> close hi Oprah it's not Trump yes. Nope, nope. It's the Crown Prince Mohammed bin Salam of Saudi Arabia. The one that just met in Washington. He was in Washington D.C. Yeah. and then he went up to Jared Palo Alto. Jared Kushner's new best friend. I don't know. What? And then and then he went down and he's and he's taken over the four students for this week. Uh, he was in there. I guess he wants to meet. He's meeting the Rupert Murdoch, and he went to his house for dinner the other night. And Oprah is, is on his list. There's people that rich. Saudi Arabia. Yeah. Hello, oil. Okay, oil. He's very, <laughs> but he's very progressive. He's the one, I believe. That is allowing women to drive cars in Saudi Arabia. That's supposed Arabia to happen at the end of the year. Yeah, that's yeah. going to be great. So he's he's really sort of bringing them along. So no, he he sounds like a really interesting guy. And uh, you know, are you going to meet him? Uh, well, I, I've invited him to come up and be on the show. I don't know. We're, we're, we're waiting. Uh, <laughs> but Your phone's ringing. <laughs> oh, he heard you. <laughs> yeah. But uh, I, I'm. I'm I'm thrilled for the Four Seasons because it's how nice to sell out the hotel for three or four days. And actually, it's a nice hotel. Yeah, it's a great hotel. You know how much it costs uh, a night to to take over the whole hotel? for the hotel? Just for the hotel rooms. I would say it's got to be a million a night, right? No, no, it's not that, that much. Not that much. Okay. No, I, well, I would five hundred room times. No, million. about one hundred ninety thousand. Oh, is what that he's all? Spending. Yeah, and he's got a he's got oh, a few rooms over okay. the Hermitage for the uh, extra staff. For the <laughs> for the staff. Those are only five hundred six hundred dollars a night rooms. There are a lot of women that go there and stay after they've had facelifts. Did you know that? Uh, no, at the Hermitage or Four Seasons. At the Four Seasons. Yeah. Oh, I didn't know. That. I've heard. Oh, that. there you go. That's well, we got all kinds of See, they're right. Beverly Hills plastic surgeons. Have you got one more piece? Nope, we're done. That's it. Okay, that's, that's, gonna, that's gonna wrap it up for Travel News. Travel News was brought to you from the internet website, www.adw.tv, the first place to go, even to visit the last place on Earth. Earth. When we come back, we're gonna go to the first place on Earth. You're gonna love it. It's called Zurich, Switzerland. Stay tuned, we'll be right back. <laughs>
fun group this is. I love well, it when Martha and there. Rebecca are together. We're playing in the sandbox all together. <laughs> yes, we are. Uh, and we're going to go somewhere. Uh, top off the show, I thought we'd start out in going to Switzerland, which is one of my favorite destinations. I just got back uh, after a great mm. ski trip with your husband, actually. Yes. I've seen and, some um, of the video and it looked fun. And you know, when we go skiing in Switzerland, we always start in one of the best cities in Switzerland, and that's Zurich. We fly into Zurich because they have great air airline service from uh, the west coast, from the east coast, mm -hmm. from just about everywhere. It's yeah. a great airport. Zurich Airport is terrific. And uh, from the airport, you can get to pretty much anywhere, but I like to stop in Zurich for a few days just to kind of decompress and stay at my favorite hotel, one of my favorite hotels in the world which is the Bauer Lac, which is in the center of town, right near the lake. And um, so when we all arrived, we arrived on the coldest friggin' day of the year. In fact, it was probably the coldest day in Swiss history. Uh, there was this Arctic blast. Remember they called it the beast from the east that came through mm -hmm. with Arctic temperatures? I mean, I think in some mountains it was down to minus 26. Oh, I mean, nice. I saw cold. in your Facebook icicles coming off the statues. Yeah. Yes. Well, all the, all the fountains in, uh, in Zurich, and there's some 200 fountains, were all frozen. <laughs> it was unbelievable. And uh, I had my son with me for the first time on this trip. And he's going, what, and, what's and he's going about this? what do you guys like about this? <laughs> Why do you like Zurich? And I said, no, I love Zurich. And you know what the great thing is? Even if it's cold outside, the folks are so nice and friendly. It's very warm on the inside. Yeah. And food is terrific. Yeah. So I want to run this video. I call it Frozen in Zurich. So <laughs> let's take a look at Zurich in the ice. I was once asked by hotel owner Dan Stevens what was the single most important factor when staying at a five-star hotel. For me, it's the hotel staff. A friendly doorman who remembers you, a welcoming reception desk that greets you by name and quickly checks you in, a can-do concierge who can anticipate your needs, efficient and non-intrusive housekeeping, and rapid room service are what creates five-star magic. To get a team this motivated in providing exceptional service is why there are only a few true five-star hotels. The sense of personalization should extend to the hotel bar and restaurant, where the metro d, the bartender, and service staff remember your preferences, and the quality of attention to details throughout the hotel is consistent. No dining experience captures the essence of Zurich better than the historic Kronenhall restaurant. One dines in rooms surrounded by original works of art by Chagall, Miro, Picasso, Braque, and others. Many of the artists were past guests when the restaurant was the meeting place for artists, musicians, and authors. If these walls could talk, one could feast on just the history made here. The traditional Swiss fare is sophisticated, but not frou-frou. Portions are generous and flavors are bold. Wiener schnitzel and rosti potatoes, steak with morels and spetzel, and the luscious mousse au chocolat are just some of the classic menu items. Breakfast at the Bar au Lac in the Pavilion restaurant is worth getting up for. It's not just the freshly baked croissants, the exotic fresh fruits, yogurts, muesli, or roast beef, salamis, turkey, bunderfleisch, or smoked salmon. It is everything you could ever wish for at breakfast, served with a smile. The staff are always gracious, helpful, and genuinely wanting to please. The sense of family reflects the generations of the Bowers and descendants who have owned and operated the hotel since it was founded by Johannes Bauer in 1844. The okay, warmth well, of the hotel yeah. staff <laughs> kept the cold weather outside in check. At minus 13.4 degrees centigrade, the end of February was one of the coldest in Zurich. So tell me, has it ever been this cold before here? Now? Yeah. I think seven. In 1907? Yeah. Before you were born? Yeah. <laughs> just, just. <laughs> Goodbye. Uh, goodbye. A bracing stroll along Bahnhofstrasse with a hot chocolate stop at Sprungli and then a little shopping for wine at Globus warms the heart. 
Globus Supermarket has everything for the connoisseur, including pepper mills, hot chilies, and exotic salts. Usually Zurich has temperatures in the upper 30s in late February, but the beast from the east in 2018 brought Arctic temperatures from Siberia to Zurich and turned the hundreds of flowing fountains into ice sculptures. On Wednesdays at the train station is the Bahnhof Market, where dozens of producers and farmers have stalls showcasing their fresh produce, cheeses, meats, fruits, and pastas. Across the street from the station is the Swiss National Museum. One can slide into a journey from Switzerland's origins to present day. From the engineering feat of the world's longest railway tunnel, the Gothard Base Tunnel, to the legendary Alpine rescue dog, the St. Bernard, to the brown Swiss dairy cow, one of the highest milk yielding breeds of cattle. You can try out milking a virtual cow, see the foot from the treasury of the Basel Cathedral. It contains a bone from the foot of a child killed during the slaying of the children in Bethlehem. A special exhibition of the Montreux Jazz Festival brings the museum to current events. But take a look at this room. I mean, this room says it all. Lots of spaciousness, mirrors, great lighting, wonderful couches and chairs. They have a velvet character to them and even a little fireplace. But uh, I want you to just imagine, it's so quiet, you could hear a pin drop, right? By the way, this is a real orchid plant. Amazing, huh? Uh, but you're actually on near the edge of the lake. Look, the lake is right out there. There's the traffic going along, but you can't hear a thing because these are double pane glass, really good. Maybe triple, I don't know. But it's quiet as can be. And when you lower all the shades, it is as dark as a cave if you want it to be that dark. And now let's talk about the beds. These beds are some of the most comfortable beds I've ever slept in. I used to think the Four Seasons beds were the best. I'm kind of leaning now towards the Bauerlach beds. I don't know what it is about the mattress, but I wake up, I feel ready to roll. And beautiful linen sheets and pillows. A big boy and a little boy. And this is my pillow. Right. Hi, I'm Ron McLeod, and welcome to Raclette Stuttle. Raja, the concierge of the Bauerlach, arranged a delicious and memorable meal to warm us up with luscious raclette and cheese fondue at Raclette Stubi. Along with a brilliant Swiss white wine, it added one more spectacular to 48 remarkable hours in Zurich. Boy, oh boy. C'est bon? Un that unbelievable. And we're back, and boy, I want to go right back to the Bauerlach, check in, and I could stay there for a couple of weeks, maybe a month or so. And speaking of the Bauerlach, they're going to have a special black gold gastronomy night on May 26th. Do you know What's what that, that is? What's that? Black gold? Caviar. Very caviar. good. Yeah. yeah, they're doing an incredible six-course caviar dinner, and it includes the champagnes and wines that match with the caviar. And I hear it's a fabulous event. All these chefs come in and help prepare. It's supposed wow. to be a wow. really so that is, And that's a really nice restaurant. So The, restaurant, yes, the, the pavilion top. restaurant is beautiful at, at the Bauer Lack. And, um, you know, there's a lot to do. There's, there's much more than even that we showed on the show. But one of the things, the last night we were there, we went to a place called uh, Kafluten. Kafluten, maybe is the way it's pronounced. And it's a restaurant that's been around, it's in a billion, it's 100 years old. Mm -hmm. And it's a restaurant that's got traditional Swiss food, like mm -hmm. uh, what you saw, Wiener Schnitzel and right. stuff like that. 
but it's adjacent to a theater that's been turned into a nightclub. Oh, oh well, and it's called the I Merchants the, Club. I saw the pictures. That place is amazing. We went in there, there were two thousand people. It was crazy. dancing. It was a a disco. nightclub. It wasn't like a stage it, show. No, no, no. It's, it was, it's, it's like a, I mean, they do stage shows there as well. But, but the night we were there, they had a DJ, a special DJ that came in, and the music was Ask phenomenal. Ask him how he felt the next day. Oh, I, felt <laughs> I felt fine. I felt fine. They all felt. I had to get on an airplane. I had to feel fine. Did you hear from your husband? Yes, I did. And he That's was not feeling I fine. That felt good the next day. <laughs> anyway, Zurich is so much fun. I highly recommend uh, at least a few nights in Zurich. Go to the, the mm. museums, go to the yeah, Grossminster yeah. Church. There's a lot of culture to take in as well. And make sure you eat because you Zurich eat is... And eat and eat. Yeah, it's you can't a go wrong. Feast for the eyes and the stomach. All righty, uh, we're going to take a break. When we come back, we're going to go to Colorado. Okay. So from one mountain group to another. Yeehaw. Right here Yippee on the Colorado. Yay. <laughs> Gaylene uh, Orr is going to be joining us. Stay tuned. We'll be right back. Here on Around the World. I'm glad you're watching. I'm Arthur von Wiesenberg, Martha Bull. Yep. Beautiful Martha Bull. Nope. Gorgeous Rebecca Brand. There you go. And, and of course, <laughs> the, the cheeseburger here in the middle. Uh, I'm a lucky guy that I'm between two beauties. I'm the beast. We're going to have a great time because we're going to place... the beef? Is that what you said? <laughs> no, the beef. Place I have uh, always adored, and I'm really glad that we're going to have someone in the studio to tell us all about mm -hmm. Colorado and what's happening there. One of the most beautiful states in the nation. Mm -hmm. And uh, joining us is Galen Orr of Galen Orr or Orr Communications in Hi. studio. Hi. Hello, Galen. Hey. It's so nice being here. Yeah, great to have you on Thank board. Thank you. Thank you. Uh, you know, we, we just connected recently, and uh, I started looking at some of the places that you are connected to. And I've been to Grand Junction. You have. Yeah, I you just, do. Yeah. Did you try some Colorado wine? Oh uh, yeah. Well, I, you I, did. What, my lushy Su friend. Su <laughs> well, <it's the> Sutcliffe <laughs> Winery. <laughs> which, yes. yes. What winery? I haven't heard. There's about tons these of things. wineries. There are between Grand Junction wow. and uh, Cord. Uh, yeah, well, it's, there's it's, uh, Delta County on yeah, down. Yeah. Yes. Some really good wines. Yes. Yep. I we used to sell our wine grapes from our ranch in Utah. To Suckliff Winery in Colorado. Nice. Yeah. That's out of Cortez. Exactly. Yes. Yep. That's great. Yep. There um, you go. Yeah. So now tell me, uh, Grand Junction, you don't hear that much about it being a tourist destination because you hear about the big name places, the Aspens, right. the Snow Masses, right. you know, the Brecken Ridges, the... The um, Vales. The Boulders. Right. The Deer Valleys. Yeah. The Parks. Oh, no, well, no, no, that's no, right. Sorry, I'm, I'm going saying, into I'm Utah. Saying. Sorry, sorry, sorry. <laughs> but, but, Beaver Creek. But Grand yes. Junction has not been on the forefront. Uh, no, and what is what is there that we should be knowing about? It's really a hidden gem. You know, they've got the Colorado National Monument, which is just an outstanding um, national park that you can go and you can hike and you can bike and you can see no one if that's like what you like. If yeah. you like to hike by yourself, um, there's great biking in the area. They're really giving Moab a run for their money. Um, there's also people don't really understand the water element that we have in the whole state. But in Grand Junction, they have the largest flat top mountain called the Grand Mesa, where there's over 300 lakes. So if you want to kayak, camp, boat, fly fish, um, any type of water sport is doable there. So it's really um, a, a kind of hidden gem. And like we said, too, with the winery, so many people don't understand that or don't know that Colorado has some great wines. And they also have great peaches coming from the Palisades. And, and we give Georgia a run for their money on yeah. peaches. <laughs> they are huge and they're and, uh, delicious. They are delicious. Yeah. And peaches start coming out in around July and August. Mm -hmm. um, yeah, and they just, oh, mm -hmm. just talking about it makes me want to have one. Mm -hmm. yeah. <laughs> and they grow apples too, um, apricots, cherries. So 
It'll grow, all start grow. growing here soon, yes. yes. Yeah. And you've got the Colorado River going through that area, right? We do, so Grand County is another area that um, where actually I live, which is the community of Winter Park, Grand Lake, Granby, Hot Sulphur Springs. Um, and in Grand Lake is the headwaters for the Colorado River. So a little known fact is the Colorado River actually used to be called the Grand. And so that's why you have Grand County, Grand Junction is a junction of two rivers, the Grand Canyon um, that were created. And those Colorado legislatures decided they wanted to name it. This is Ancient Voices, a digital audio tour of Southwestern Colorado's antiquities, a presentation of Mesa Verde Country. This trip will begin in Cortez, Colorado, spending some time exploring the visitor services, historic and prehistoric treasures of this uniquely southwestern town. We'll then journey westward, discovering the archaeological, geologic, agricultural, and natural wonders of McElmo Canyon and the southern portions of Canyons of the Ancients National Monument, including Rock Canyon and the lower reaches of Sand Canyon. Ultimately, we'll view an historic trading post on the Utah-Colorado border before making our way to Hovenweep National Monument. This audio tour is versatile, designed to accompany you as you journey at your own pace among the natural and man-made wonders. Mesa yeah, Verde, that yes. looks beautiful too. It is a beautiful and area. And Cortez, that's real south, isn't it? It is. It's the southwest corner of the state. Four corner area. The four corner, yeah. And it is um, known for their archaeological. Um, there's Mesa Verde National Park, which are 1,200 year old dwellings um, throughout the whole site. Adobes? And, well, they're, they're adobes, but they're more like um, the Pueblonians, the ancestral Pueblonians actually built their homes back. And, those, and it's incredible, like you go to Mesa Verde and all of a sudden you just see all these dwellings in the cliffs. Um, Can you and tour them? Um, yes. Sight to see? In Mesa Verde National Park they actually do tours mm -hmm. that you can do. Um, but you can't climb in them. You cannot. However, yeah, there's a Ute Tribal <laughs> Park. I don't know if you've been to that area, but it's run by the Ute Indians and they border Mesa Verde National Park and they do tours and you can actually go into these dwellings that were built 1200 years ago. Yeah. And climb the ladder that is, and see petroglyphs. The exactly, paintings and, so and the paintings, oh, wow. and it's incredible. It's an incredible area. Yeah. They're also doing something new this year because um, they're they're really into agritourism, and so they're doing a farm and ranch tour where you can go and actually spend a day with a farmer or a rancher and see what life is like on a farm or a ranch. And so they're just starting those tours this year, so you can see what a where all of our fruits and vegetable and all that stuff comes from. It's so cool. it's an it's an amazing area, oh. too. And I don't think a lot of people realize that Colorado is so productive when it comes to food and beverages, and, and there's a lot of stuff being done there. I remember the mineral water business was booming in Colorado because you got all these natural springs right. there. And you mentioned hot sulfur springs. Are there ba baths there? Absolutely, yes, and there are historical springs there, too, where the Arapaho Indians used to actually took their horses and put them in the spring when they ever had some type of leg injury or, or whatnot, too. And we just showed a picture of one of our dude ranches in Grand County. We have four dude and gist ranches, and that is a fantastic vacation if you've ever been What was the it. name of that movie where this guy, Billy Crystal, and Oh, Oh, yeah. 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 They need another movie like that. That really helped the dude ranch business. Yeah. Oh, it was so much fun. I've stayed in a dude ranch. Those are so it's, much fun. It's a fun vacation, yeah. and what's really nice yeah. is, like, there's no TV, and you really... You know, you get to visit with, you know, we like TV, no, not saying we don't, but it's you get to visit with the people that um, are around you and you sit there and can share your stories of what your day was like. And, it's and go really square dancing fun. sometimes. Yeah, <laughs> and kids can be kids. That's right. right. What a and nice change, huh? Really no has. texting, no, no no computers. You're no. actually dealing with living the life as Absolutely. life happens. And like kids get, used to. You know right. what? Kids are, I mean, I used to be told, go out to the yard and play. Yeah. Go play that was with my, the, that, go play the freeway. <laughs> <laughs> what they told you. Oh, they give you a stick. Yeah, this is your toy. Yeah, like right. this. And you made a dig, gun out of it, didn't dig you? Dig in the ground, <laughs> to dig a hole. Make you know, a gun or whatever. Right. Yeah. Those were the, those were the dig the trees. 
Yeah, yeah. Those were the days. Yeah, but, but anyway, you can still nice. be a kid in Colorado. Yeah. Right? And what's nice, too, about the areas I've talked about so far is that they all have a national monument, a park, and um, they all have ranger programs that they offer, too, so kids can learn about nature and not be afraid of it, but understand. Um, Rocky Mountain National Park does some great junior ranger programs as well as Mesa Verde. Yeah, some people come from apartments. They come from the inner city. It's like, you know what, let's you know get out into the dirt. They need to know you can get it all over you. It's not going right. to hurt you. You can feel it and appreciate it. Exactly. And, it's so exciting to see the bugs of nature and yeah. things when you're not able to, to live that way and the in most of America, most of the world. Yeah. Now, if you're flying into the area, would you fly into Grand Junction? You would. You could fly into Grand Junction. Cortez also has a little um, but airport. But you might want to avoid Cortez and go to Durango. You might want Cortez, to do that as well. They have, they have planes that have no restrooms on them. I found that out. Oh, well, then that's what? not a good thing. Yeah. Really? And, and the one that thing could I would be an say, accident happening. And, and I will tell you, the one thing that you want to keep in mind is better to fly in and out in the morning rather than the afternoon because you get the you get the thermals, thermals okay. in the afternoon. That's yeah. just having flown okay. in and out a lot. It's got right. the experience. The so Grand Junction, I've flown in and out. You've flown into Grand Junction. It's nice or for Grand County, you fly into Denver, and it's just an hour and a half drive. Oh, it's yeah. Oh, it's yeah, it's very it's close. Beautiful. And it's funny, we used to come from Utah. You could tell the second you, you didn't need the sign. You knew as soon as you went, left Utah, Colorado, it's just a completely different feel. Yeah, because yeah. the road yeah. was paved properly, no, 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 right? No, no, no. <laughs> but just the, the, you know, you just it's looked it. around, and all of a sudden it's more lush, yeah. it's green, it's uh -huh. yeah. Yeah. And it's such a diverse state. I mean, you look at like Winter Park in Grand County where we are backed off as the Continental Divide. And then you go to Grand Junction, which is um, bluffs. And you go down to Cortez, which is a lot more agriculture, but you've got all the great outdoor activities that you can do everywhere else in the state. Uh, now, if people want to know more about uh, those areas, are, are there websites they can go see? There are. So um, for Grand Junction, it's visitgrandjunction.com. For Grand County, it's visitgrandcounty.com. And then mesaverdecountry.com. Terrific. That's easy. That is and, easy. You know, and I just heard David Gordon is going to Denver next uh, next week or so. Well, so he, he's saying he's watching this on Facebook Live all the way in Ireland. Yay. Good day. Good evening. <laughs> And uh, we got we got Mimi in Geneva watching this. Hi, Mimi. Hi, hi. Ciao. Hi. Bonjour. <laughs> Salut. Hi. And um, we really appreciate you coming well, today and sharing these well, great insights. Well, you need to come visit us. And we will. We'll yeah. be back. We'll, we'll, we'll be, be back. back. Okay. As Arnold would have said. I'm, I'm <laughs> awesome. right. And we're going to be back right after these words with a very special guest, Ali Alsra, who's going to take us to Ethiopia. Stay tuned. We'll be right wow. back. Wow. Oh. That's exotic. Wow. <laughs> been 514 leap years since its creation in 45 BC. Over here at Around the World, we are so thankful that the Mayan calendar did not take that into account. So we will be here to give you amazing travel deals, luxurious destination ideas, and much, much more every week for a long time to come. Tune in to Around the World, Thursdays at 10 a.m. on AM 1290, or at www.atw.tv. Also, be sure to check us out in Santa Barbara on Cox Television On Demand, around the world. We'll be sure to get you there. Around the world, I'm Martha Von Wiesenberg with Martha Bull and Rebecca Brand, and we're going to do it again. 
We're going to do it again. Reset the clock, That's please. how it goes here. It's like, now you see it, now you know. That's see, isn't it different from doing it live? I mean, we actually play around more. Exactly. Last because time was a nerve-wracking. It's, yeah. it's nerve-wracking. Now it's yeah. just, just, it's just, good. It's just ridiculous. Of course, after a few glasses of cognac and teasing. Oh, okay. oh, she right. reset it. Oh. Right. Right. What? Cognac. And we're back here on Around the World. I'm Martha Von Wiesenberg with Rebecca Brand and Martha Bull. And we have a very special guest coming in now. I can't wait to find out more about Ethiopia. It is on my bucket list. And Ali Onsren is in studio from Trattoria Mali. Ciao. 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 Thank you for having me. Great to see you. And you just nice got see you. back from yes. Ethiopia. But it was a very short trip. Yeah. It was very short. But yeah. long ways to get there. Long ways to get there. Very nice way to get there. How did you get there? Back. I took uh, Emirate. Emirates. Uh, Emirates from Emirates Los Angeles? Business class, yes. Emirates from LA to Dubai. Yeah. That's a 16 hours flight. <laughs> but long. it's nice. And then from Dubai? Actually, their commercial says it doesn't feel like you're there for that long. Wow. It really is true. Wow. Between sleeping, watching TV, they have a nice bar in the back where you can actually mingle with people. Really? It's so very social. It's a very social. And the bar is really nice. It's uh -huh. uh, There are tables where people can mingle around. God, like What's that? What kind of an airplane is it? It's uh, the 380, okay. Airbus 380 oh, double decker. Yeah, 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 yeah. And so the upper deck is all for business class and portion of it for first class travelers. Wow. And so it is uh, absolutely amazing. Wow. It's, the flight is great. And I spent a couple of days in Dubai. Right. And then a few How days long is it from Dubai to, did you go to Addis Ababa? To Addis Ababa, yeah. Uh -huh. So right now it's about four and a half. Oh. Uh, before it used to be about three to three and a half. Yeah. But now with what's going on in the Middle East. Oh, <laughs> so they have to go around? <laughs> oh, you can't get there from here kind of thing. <laughs> so you can't go direct. <laughs> so it's between what's going on in the Middle East and being afraid of shut down by either Yemenis or Somalis. So you have to go out into Indian Ocean, coming through uh, Red Sea. And then <laughs> wow, <laughs> it's quite uh, interesting. Yeah. Yeah. But, no, but no missiles coming your way on that. So trip, the right? funny part is, you know, when you take off from both sides, from Dubai or from uh, Ethiopia, the flight, you know, a flight map will show how you're going to go there. So it shows you're going to Somalia and then you're going to Yemen. And the, then I'm sitting there so nervous. It's like, <laughs> are we going to reach altitude by the time we get to Yemen? <laughs> and then, of course, the plane diverts wow. and goes the wrong thing. Now, now I heard that uh, Ethiopia has a new prime minister. Yes. And that's do. exciting, isn't it? He's young and energetic. He's 42 years old. That's young in my yeah. book. <laughs> but, uh, that's a babe. It's... Uh, very interesting. Uh, Ethiopia needed a new leadership, mm -hmm. and so congratulations to them for selecting him. Uh, his name is Dr. Ahmed uh, Abai. Abai. Um, yeah, Abai, Dr. Abai Ahmed Ali. Uh -huh. So there's Ali the it. <laughs> <laughs> Your name. Uh, my mom is happy with his name because uh -huh. uh, my uncle is Dr. Ahmed. Oh. <laughs> but um, he is a uh, very good uh, very good prime minister for the country mm -hmm. uh, he speaks a lot about uh, 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 joining all the different tribes together rather than individually separation so what ended up happening in the last five years the government somewhat felt like was neglecting the different groups of mm. ethiopia so we have multiple groups and the majority people in the south call oromo uh, felt that they were being run by the minority group out of the north, Tigray, mm -hmm. and that created a little friction and it kept escalating. And of course, with the help of social media, that exaggerated what the situation was and yeah. uh, created a very bad situation for the country and for the uh, people living there and of course for the tourists. Well, I understand that Ethiopia doesn't have a very strong regional paper, local paper uh, as well. They needed to kind of open up the communications a little better uh, as far as media yeah. goes and um, not suppressing yeah. Yeah. news, but just, you know, letting both yeah. sides talk. Actually, yeah, the it was extreme because you are correct in the sense that the government does control the media there. And at the same time, uh, they were, the, the previous uh, prime Minister, the pre this is still the same government, as just a new Prime Minister, and they felt that they were not allowing 
the other groups to be heard. And in that case, they were controlling the media, they were controlling who could uh, report on certain things. And what that caused was a flux of media outlets around the world that actually spoke against that. Mm. And that created even a stronger wow. backing. But once this uh, prime minister came in, uh, he is speaking about u uniting everybody, which is working. He is part of the majority population that's controlling it. And then also, uh, we were under a few uh, six month state of emergency declared for that to control the population from uprising. And now that's going to be uh, opened up again and work. And when you started to say about a paper, I immediately was thinking about the currency and opening up. So the currency was very strong, except with a little pressure from the IMF, International Money Fund. Uh, they diluted it again. And so that weakened the economy. But with the new election of the prime minister, I think the growth could pick up again. I, mean, I understand yeah. that, that um, uh, Ethiopia has a pretty decent tourism business already, even with the problems that have been going on. I think, oh, yeah. was it th over three billion tourists came through Ethiopia? Is that right? Uh, through uh, that the last number, year? I don't know. The, I think the last year we have... Three billion, three hundred twenty million, five hundred forty-two thousand, three hundred sixty-eight. Oh, dollars yeah. was generous. Oh, the yeah, oh, dollars. Dollars. Okay. Billion, that's a lot of people going yeah. there. Or, or, or each person brought one dollar. Yeah, that, that could be it. I don't know. Yeah, yeah, yeah. The, I'm sorry. I'm sorry. The, the, the numbers... The number of revenue, too. yes. The numbers of people who have gone through Ethiopia last year was 886,897. That that's absolutely correct. Tourists. However... <laughs> What's not million. recorded is that six, 60 million, is that 60 million? Yeah, 60 million passed through the airport. Oh, on their way to somewhere else. Yeah, yeah so That's, the airport oh. carries about 60 million people a year. Is that, is that because of Ethiopian Airlines being Ethiopian a good Airlines. carrier? Yeah, it is actually one of the, well, it's the largest airline in Africa. Mm. It is actually twice is all Ethiopia, uh, African airline combined. Oh. It's amazing that, but a lot of people use it as a hub to other destinations, South Africa, mm. Kenya. Yeah, okay. But uh, it is, I think that number might be a little bit exaggerated. Uh, maybe, I think six million. I, I got it yeah. from an Ethiopian because website. No, 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 that was my, my number. Oh, your yeah. number, okay. But your number is correct. My number, I think it's a little bit too, too high because considering uh, Emirate is at 80 million uh, people a year, mm -hmm. that Ethiopia is way too high for that number. So right yeah. now for, yeah. for a traveler who might be going, oh, I've always wanted to go to Ethiopia, uh, me like me, um, what would you, uh, how would you say, okay, fly to Addis, spend a couple of days there, then go out into the desert, or what would you suggest? Yeah, oh. Uh, I mean, in a, short, in a short two minutes, what would you suggest? Yeah. <laughs> so yeah. absolutely, that's what you would do. Uh, you have few options. Uh, to take the option that I took, where you take Amret to Dubai, and then from Dubai go to Ethiopia, or you could take Ethiopian Airlines direct from Los Angeles. It just happens to be a 21-hour flight direct. That's <laughs> so too much. You stop in Ireland for one hour of refueling, and then mm -hmm. you continue. You could do that. They have a great business class that you could also do that. Very comfortable with flat bed. But yes, you would arrive in Addis Ababa, uh, just get over the jet lag for a couple of days, mm -hmm. and then in Ethiopia too, uh, the majority cities are above 7,200 uh, feet of elevation, wow. and so you're going to need a couple of days to acc acclimate yeah. to that elevation like when you go to Aspen. Sure. And bring your skis. The one, no ski. <laughs> no ski. Oh, okay. So Fine. one thing, good thing happens to me whenever I'm in Aspen or Ethiopia is that whenever, uh, as much as I drink, I don't get drunk. I don't know if that happens to you that's, guys. That's uh, it's the reverse opposite. on me. It's the opposite. I drink in the opposite. I know. <laughs> <laughs> Must be an African thing. It's the opposite. Oh. But uh, I, there are some pictures I, I, that I saw. Yeah, we've been watching. On, uh, yeah. Did you see them? Yeah, 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 so yeah. there's a beautiful hotel called uh, Adi Sheraton. It's uh, the luxury collection hotel. Mm -hmm. If you like to stay there, it's a very beautiful hotel. And of course, there are many five-star hotels. Uh, the Radisson uh, Hotel, Radisson Blue, is another beautiful place. And the food, and you know, in the US, we have this, uh, 
what is it, gluten-free cake, yeah. our natural bread that we use every day from you know day one, yeah. is actually naturally gluten-free bread, the injera. Yeah. That's and interesting. That's I've had your mom's Ethiopian food. Oh, yeah, did you? It was. Yeah. That ever you remember, the best. You were, you were with <laughs> I've had it. I've it had is so good. Oh, I know. That's great. You know, I saw Jamie the other day. Oh, did you? <laughs> yeah, because we go way back. <laughs> yeah. Yeah, you guys. Well, yeah, we've Ollie, known each other forever. We've got to have you come back. And one day we all, all need to go to Ethiopia with Ollie. <laughs> I think that would be an amazing I go there place. every year, so I will take Sign me up. Yeah, yeah, yeah. We'll yes. There's a beautiful, uh, you know, the Ark of Covenant is historically the last place uh, is uh, Ethiopia mm. based on, you know, uh, the Queen of Shiva's. Fantastic. So there's a lot of history. Well, we appreciate it. And don't forget, if you're anywhere in Southern California, come to Montecito, visit Trattoria Mali, say hi yes, to yes. Ali in person. Yes. And give I'm Mali there. a big hug and kiss from all of us. Exactly. Yeah. Thank, Thank you for having me. Thank you for coming. Thank you. We're, next, we're going to go to Ireland. We are. And then we're going to Bratislava and maybe Budapest, too, with okay. David Gordon. Stay tuned. We'll be right back. And we're back here on Around the World. I'm Martha Von Wiesenberger, the lovely Martha Bull, the lovely Rebecca Brand. We're having such a good time here on Around the World. We've been everywhere, but there's we one have. more, actually two more places to go still. That's right. Yeah, that's right. We're going to go to Bratislava, right. which I always just thought of the Swing and Czech brothers. We're from Bratislava. <laughs> and then we're also going to be going to Budapest. And a lot of people say that I'm a pest, I but Buda wouldn't say that. <laughs> and we have one man who knows all about these things and much, much more. He is live in Ireland, Ireland, top of the morning or top of the evening, evening. to David Gordon of Four Monkeys Media. Hello, David. Hello, how are you? Good to talk to you again. Well, it's great to have you back on. We've missed you, but I know you've been traveling like a wild man. And uh, Bratislava, how do you even get there from anywhere? Where is Bratislava? <laughs> well, it's, it's actually an interesting thing because Bratislava uh, is the capital of Slovakia, which was used to be part of the Czech Republic or Czech Czechoslovakia before it became split about 25 years ago. Uh, the closest big city, I guess, to Bratislava would be Vienna ah. uh, in Austria. So I would say most of the international flights are going to Vienna. Um, and then you're only 30 minutes, like three or 30 minutes down the road to Bratislava. Wow. Okay, that's easy. That's a, that's, that's I'm impressive. half Czech. You are. I'm half Czech. And the check's in the mail. Um, <laughs> I was no cancelled check. Okay. <laughs> and, and so... Bratislava, I mean, what are they known for? I mean, I, I think of Czechoslovakia known for a lot of things. First, beautiful women, and secondly, Prague, right? Beautiful city, glass. Beautiful city and what? glass. But what about Bratislava? Well, the, the great thing about Bratislava, as I discovered, is that it's a bit of a mini Prague. If you've ever been to Prague, you'll understand that Prague's a very touristy place. It's got very old buildings, and it's a, it's a great place to visit. Mm -hmm. Bratislava is just the same, except there's about half the number of tourists there, um, but maybe even less than half. So it, it's really quiet, and it's really uh, such a great place to go to. Mm -hmm. Whenever we were there, it was uh, it was actually New Year's Eve, uh, just at the, the turn of the year. Uh, so we were actually there. It was actually the, the 25th anniversary of Slovakia becoming a republic, uh, which meant there was a huge big street party, and it was all families, and it was it, it was a really lovely atmosphere. Uh, which meant that it was uh, something totally different because usually you go to the New Year's Eve parties and it's all sort of uh, people out having fun and you don't really see the 
kids only so much, but this was all families that were celebrating their country, I guess, and celebrating the fact that it's New Year as well. So uh, that was a really nice first impression to get of, of a city. Mm-hmm. The big thing about Slovakia is because it's such a new country uh, in, in, in relative terms, um, they're, they're very much into showing, showcasing what they have to offer. And I know, Arthur, you enjoy wine, especially in California, um, but the, the, you haven't tasted anything to taste Slovakian wine. It is the most beautiful wine I've ever tasted. Is it like a Riesling? Um, and really because of... Go ahead. Is it like a Riesling? Because that's very popular with the climate up in, Ger- in Germany, a sweeter white wine. What is yes. the Slovakian the, wine like? Yes, exactly. That's exactly, exactly what it is. I mean, the, the Rieslings and the sweeter wines are, are, are the mainstay of the of the production there. Mm-hmm. And when you're traveling in by train in the Bratislava, you can see the vineyards, the trains go past the vineyards. In some, in some cases, there's literally people's gardens, so that's smaller production. Um, so it's, it's nothing compared to the sort of the vast production you would see it over in California. But uh, when you actually go to Slovakia, you, nearly, you can nearly pick the grapes yourself mm. <laughs> off the vine uh, that are going to go into the bottle of wine. Uh, we, we discovered a great place called the Grand Cru Wine Gallery, um, and it was literally, uh, it's just an old building, but the, the guy has converted it into a sort of a, a wine bar, and he brings in so many people per night, and he, he knows every bottle of wine he has, and he knows where it's come from, who made it, when it was made, and he can tell you the story about each vineyard in, in the country as well. And it's, it's a great way to learn about Bratislava. You don't remember much by the end of the night, but it's a good way to learn about something in the, in the first how, place. How are the prices in Bratislava compared to yeah. other parts of Europe? Uh, extremely cheap, uh, very, very inexpensive. Uh, you know, we, we, we were able to dine out uh, and get a, a decent meal for for, like, uh, for the two of us was about thirty euros, uh, which is, is very very inexpensive. And I mean, the, and the wine is, is really is, is about five or six euro a bottle. It's not expensive at all. Um, you know, so so from from my point of view, coming from uh, the UK, um, I find it quite inexpensive. And again, you guys are trying to see and coming in from America. That would be the same sort of uh, the same sort of thing. It's it's very cheap, mainly because the tourists haven't really hit Bratislava yet. It's, it's sort of one of those sort of undiscovered cities in Europe. Uh, people would travel between Vienna and Budapest and maybe just sort of go through Bratislava and honestly stop. Uh, so it, it's a bit of an undiscovered destination, which is one of the things that attracted me to it. I have to say. Now, a question for you: My biggest fear is getting to a place and not being able to communicate with people there. Do they speak English? Yes, they do. Uh, probably better than we do, actually. <laughs> <laughs> uh, I mean, you know, the, uh, especially in East. I mean, I, I love Eastern Europe, and I love uh, sort of all those different countries. But a lot of a lot of people now do speak English. But I think I think we have to, as a matter of course, mm. uh, because I mean, we're we're not going to be able to learn Slovakian um, <laughs> as easily, or, or indeed in, in the case of Budapest, Hungarian either, because they're quite complicated languages. So everybody sort of does speak English. But I mean, I, you always try and do. Whenever I go to somewhere new, I always try and, and learn some of the language, at least to be able to say hello and thank you and, How to and, get to and the, the basics, bathroom. you know, and, and that sort of uh, endears you to the, the people you're talking to. Now, now so you mentioned Hungarian, and that was the other part of your trip. Uh, you went to Budapest, which is actually where I'm going this summer. Tell me about Budapest, because I've always been curious. Uh, it, it's obviously much I mean, more touristic. You, you haven't been? I've never been. <laughs> You've been, right? No. Yeah, but Budapest is a yeah, I, I, we were there as part of the trip to Bratislava. We, because because they're so close, we, we got the train between the two cities. So we stayed for two nights in Budapest and uh, like a couple of nights in Bratislava. Uh, Bud- Budapest is a huge city, um, but uh, once you get into the city centre, uh, it's actually quite easy to get around. It, it, it's, uh, it just, it's quite compact and you're able to walk and um, sort of see around. And of course, they have the tourist buses and they have the, the boat tours. Um, a, a big thing about Budapest is, is, is the sort of history behind it because it's obviously two cities. Uh, there's the Buddhist side and the Pest side, um, and you know, so there's quite a bit of history to the city. Uh, there's places like the Fisherman Bastion, and you go to the top of this, and it's a bit like the Cinderella Castle in Disneyland, um, and it's, it's sort of that sort of style of building. Uh, you can go there and you can look across the River Danube to see the, the Hungarian Parliament building, and uh, it's a very busy tourist area. I have to say, so you just have to pick your moment sometimes. Um, another big area in Budapest is the Jewish Quarter. Uh, the, the, what they've got is a thing called ruin pubs. And I know, Arthur, when you go there, you'll love these places because they're, they're basically their old ruined buildings. Oh, I love um, ruins. I live in one. <laughs> <laughs> uh, they're old ruined buildings. And, you, you know, they have done these uh, sort of, they didn't want to knock them down and they couldn't afford to rebuild them and sort of renovate them. So what they've done is they've converted them into bars. So they're, they're done all around. 
fascinating. Uh, the, 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 um, and there's fascinating. I mean, there, there are all sorts of uh, collector's items, and there's Americana stuff there. There's, there's antiques from Eastern Europe. There's random things in the walls, and uh, they, they, they are ruined pubs. I mean, they're, they're, they are ruined buildings, uh, but they're the most fascinating place to go to. And that, that sort of brought on then more of a, a street food vibe as well, and in Budapest as well. There's, there's um, some great street food available, um, and the, the, these are all centred in one particular area, so it's, it's a place that many people go to uh, just to experience a bit of life. Um, as for places to stay, in Budapest, we, we stayed in... Uh, as you probably would as well, Arthur, we stayed in one of the top hotels in the city. It's called the Corinthia mm-hmm. uh, in Budapest, and it's, uh, it's got its own spa, and it's got its uh, of course, Budapest is also known for the spa waters, but the, the Corinthia has got its own, uh, its own feed of the, of the spa waters in, into the building. Um, in fact, the, the, the building itself was actually the, you remember the Grand Budapest Hotel that the movie came out a number yes. of years ago? Yeah, yeah, yeah sure. Uh, it was actually, yeah, it was actually based on that hotel, uh, so... Uh, that that was quite a cool thing to be able to go and actually stay in that in that such a historic building, you know, in such a historic hotel. So, uh, because I'm also a fan of that movie. So, you know, it, Budapest, you know, it, especially when you have a two centre holiday like that, Budapest is certainly the busy place. Um, you know, it's full of tourists, and you know, you just have to pick your moments as to when to go to the various attractions. But I mean, you've so many places to choose from. Whereas you go to Bratislava, it's much quieter. Uh, much more laid back and much more le- much less expensive as well. It's, it's, it's quite a nice way to do a two centre break uh, because it's only a couple of hours apart by train. You could also wait a bit. David, we're, we're, we got we got to David, we got to say goodbye because we're run out of time. But you got so much more to tell us. Oh, yeah. I think some of our folks should go visit your website, fourmonkeysmedia.com. dot com. Is that your site? Yes, and we'll find all sorts of things on there, including pictures of you as well. Uh-oh, uh-oh. <laughs> I ho- I, I, <laughs> now I'm nervous, but I appreciate the tip. And, uh, and David, I hope we have you back here on Around the World in the very near future. Thank you so much for your report and um, wishing you good travels. And I can't believe it. It's We're actually, finished. It's time, to, it's time to wrap it up. It's been such a great trip. I, I don't have any jet lag. Uh, first of all, I want to uh, thank... Uh, uh, Galen Orr, who, uh, right. Galen, who took Colorado. us uh, to Colorado, yeah. and I've gotten a Rocky Mountain High out of that. <laughs> Ollie Olstrad took us to Ethiopia. Uh, you just heard David Gordon, and of course, you saw a little bit of Zurich, how wonderful Zurich is, even when it's frozen. Uh, next time on Around the World, cold. we're going to go to the All Switzerland Show. You're going to love that. I feel a yodel coming on. And in the meantime, <laughs> we thank you for watching. To all our Facebook friends, stay tuned. We'll be back. Happy trails. Okay.